question about exam. Uh, yeah. About exam on Thursday, we should come to the university or you will call us. It would be online exam or uh, it will be it will be in the class. It will be a classical exam. Okay. The subject that I have issued uh, uh, taught and the uploaded to the system, uh, you are responsible to study it, and this will then uh, be in a classical exam in the class, okay? Okay, okay, I got now. Okay, I'm going to share you uh, the slide. Let me check where I was because I got to manage it. Okay. Um, until today, we exercise the aggregate demand, aggregate supply in the Keynesian economics, how it is affecting and changing the market structure. Before going to the estimations and calculations of the expenditure models in Keynesian, I will give you some information about the marginal propensity of saving, marginal propensity of consumption, and some other, uh, uh, let's say, instructions about the Keynesian economics, and then we will go to some estimations. Okay. The uh, uh, as I said to you, today we exercise the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, the model that I have given you in the short run and in the long run, if you remember. And then I have done some uh, applications also a little bit, but we didn't give you a solid application with the numbers, but the graphical uh, estimations and graphical illustration is also introduced to you. If you are having problem with this, then I will upload some more de materials for being able to read and understand better. We are going today to determine because since you are in the economics of uh, uh, in, in the finance, I think department, you are coming from the finance department or in business, banking and finance, you are or business. No, economy. Economics, ah, it's good, and you, you know some economics probably. You are understanding the aggregate demand, aggregate supply, and the Keynesian economics. This is good. I didn't know that we have economics department. We have, I think, business department here. But it is good that you are doing economics, so we are colleagues. Okay, as I said to you, the aggregate demand and aggregate uh, supply is important for being able to understand how it is affecting and changing the economy and the policy of the government which is affecting and changing the parameters, the inflation, the interest rate, the GDP, employment, everything is introduced you in the former chapters. And today we are going to exercise a little bit the impact of the marginal propensity of consumption and marginal propensity of saving, which is important for being able to under, understand the uh, Keynesian aggregate uh, expenditure model. The aggregate demand and the supply is, is, is important. And the schedule and the curve that shows the total quantity of goods and services demanded at different price level is illustrated to you in the former slides, as I said to you. And the aggregate supply is the schedule or curve showing the total quantity of goods and services supplied or produced at different price level. And Gross domestic production is the amount of the goods and services which is produced in a year, or so-called the total market value of the final goods and services produced in a, a current year. Uh, the national income, the national income is also the gross national income is the amount of the produced goods and services in the monetary value. The economists often use output and the income in her changeable because whatever is spent on a product output value is also the income of the people producing it. So therefore the income total value of the produced goods and services will create the national income. Interchangeable amount of this 
income is also dependent to the amount of the producing produce goods and services in the economy. And as much as the inflation is in the economy, this will increase only the nominal value of this, but in the real term, it should be estimated for being able to understand what is the real economical uh, uh, aggregate value, which is enlarging and increasing the wealthiness and the welfare of the nation. Because sometimes inflation, uh, as I mentioned to you in last lecture, is uh, manipulating and exaggerating the numbers, and this will then uh, not good for the economy because sometimes you are able to determine its uh, real value, but sometimes people and the governments and the politicians using these nominal values and nominal param uh, numbers, which is manipulating the development. And if you are always concentrating to the nominal variables, is not good for the economy, isn't it? Um, disposable income is the income that we are consuming in every personal uh, income that is given and distributed in the economy. It is the sum of the income of all the individuals in the economy after all taxes deduced and all transfer payments have been added. The deduction of this taxes and other uh, payments to the governments will be extracted and then you have the disposable income. So the income will be subtracted from the taxes and added the transfers, then this will then give you the disposable income. Disposable income is the income available for personal consumption, expenditures and personal savings. And the saving disposable income not spent for consumer goods and services. This is the amount of the money which is going to be saved in the banking sector, in the intermediaries, in the institutions where we are having some options to get some interest or we can use for some other options in the economy for saving. Disposable income either going to be consumed or saved. We are currently unfortunately consuming our income our disposable income because it is not too huge. And <coughs> since it is so, the minimum wage is very small, as you are observing in Cyprus and in many emerging economies. And when this is so small, the minimum wage is not allowing to make some saving or put some capital or money to the banking. And results of this, the uh, amount of money in the economy which is going to be invest and which is going to be used for the uh, economical activities and entrepreneurs going to borrow for some investments and uh, economical uh, uh, activities and businesses is not uh, uh, realized. And some uh, uh, problem will create then because uh, most of the people are not entrepreneurs. They are working for some uh, capital, for some, some income and wages, some salaries. And some of the people are becoming entrepreneurs and becoming some investors for creating some uh, surplus and uh, positive uh, uh, goods and services to the economy. And if this capital, which is uh, saved by the consumers, by the households, is not uh, realized sufficiently, then there will be a problem for uh, creating some businesses to the economy. And if you are not able to put some capital for making some investment for enlarging and increasing your economical activities, so-called the good and services produced in a year is not enlarged, is also of this uh, small uh, saving or very little uh, savers uh, percentages, this will then create some negativity to the economy and they may need some FDI investments, some foreign direct investments, some foreign portfolio investment from the outside, from the foreigners. And this is costly from IMF, from World Bank and some other institutions or countries will then support you. And when they are giving you some, when they owe you some capital and some uh, resources, this will then create another uh, problem, another uh, loanable uh, problem to the economy because they have to pay 
after a short period or medium period of time or long period of time back to this money. And since you don't uh, enlarge and increase your economic activities, this will then create much deficit and your current account deficit will become enlarged and enlarged and you are not able to uh, increase your economy and develop your economy sufficiently because you are dependent to this uh, deficit and you are dependent to this uh, foreigners uh, capital and as much as your inflation reducing your economical uh, currencies and economical capacity then you are not able to pay on time this uh, capital which is borrowed and this will then enlarge and increase the problems in the economy Therefore, it is important to create some uh, reasonable income or reasonable wages or salary in the economy. So called the minimum wage must be in a reasonable uh, level for letting people to make some savings. <clears throat> and this will then uh, collect it and uh, will be in the pool in the banking sector and create a sufficient uh, capital and uh, investment to the economy, but if you are not able to do this, then this is then problem. Therefore, uh, problem, especially in the emerging economies, arise from this uh, minimum wage, which is around 300 and 400, maybe maximum 500, and people are not able to save. And as I said to you, saving performance must be at least 15% of the governments of the nations for being able to perform uh, sustainable economical models. And if it is not realized, then this is a problem to the economy. Uh, when we are coming to these uh, propensities, which is related to this saving, the share of saving and the share of uh, consuming is uh, estimated uh, usually by using the average, propens average uh, propensity to consume and average propensity to saving and then also marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to saving for being able to estimate the percentages of the economy which is distributed between consumption and saving. The average propensity to consume is the fraction of the disposable income that households plan to spend for consumer goods and services. This is the consumption amount. This is the amount of the money which an ordinary consumer used for consuming. And it is formulated as the C, the consumption divided to the income. This is then the disposable income. And the average propensity to saving is the opposite part of this, is the fraction of the disposable income that households save. The average propensity of saving is equal to saving divided to the disposable income. This is very easy to calculate. I will give you in the future uh, slide some uh, estimations that you will understand better. Whenever you have problem with these presentations, you ask me any question, then I will stop and explain better. The marginal propensity of consume, consume, consumption is the fraction of any change. This is then the changes. The, 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 the delta C over delta D I is the, the differentiation of the consumption, which is uh, the additional unit of consumption, is divided to the additional uh, income, so-called delta C over delta uh, uh, di, so-called the uh, differentiation of the consumption will be divided to the differentiation of the uh, disposable income, will give you the marginal propensity of consumption. Therefore, the fractional uh, changes of uh, disposable income uh, uh, is going to be determined regarding to the consumption. And when you are dividing this consumption, this differentiation or changes in the income, changes in the consumption to the changes in the disposable income, it gives you the marginal propensity of consumption. And usually marginal propensity of consumption plus marginal propensity of saving must be equal to one. And it is about or around 80% consumption, 20% saving is expected to be realized for creating some saving capital to the economy. And the marginal propensity of saving is the opposite part. As I said to you, it is the fraction of any change in disposable income that households save. Therefore, in this part of the 
propensities, we have the marginal propensity of saving, which is the differentiation of the saving will be divided to the differentiation of the disposable income. So called the changes in the saving will be divided to the changes in the disposable income, which is the amount of the changes in the saving will be divided to the amount of the disposable income. Um, and as I said to you, uh, marginal propensity to consumption plus marginal propensity to saving must be equal to one and average propensity to consumption and average propensity to saving is also is expected to equal to one. Is there any question with this? Expected rate of return is the R and the increase in profit firms, which is the P, anticipate it will obtain by the purchasing capital expressed as a percentage of the total cost of the investment activity. The real interest rate is the I or which is represented sometimes with R and I is represented sometimes with the nominal interest rate, but sometimes is also represented with the real interest rate. The interest rate expressed in dollars of constant value. This is uh, also, of course, the book uh, in the United States and uh, many things is dependent to the uh, United States uh, parameters as uh, the currency is always in the dollar. A percentage of the borrowed amount that is payment made for the use of borrowed money is expressed. The C is the consumption, I is the gross investment, G is the governmental spending, which is the uh, components of the uh, Y, so called the output or the uh, expenditures or so-called the governmental expenditures. The X is the net export, which is the export minus import will give you the net export and it is usually negative. And this is then the problem to the economy because balance of payments will then become always negative because of this uh, negativity. In many countries, the import is always higher than export and results of this is uh, NX or net export always becoming negative. And this is happens because many emerging economies are dependent to the foreign energy and foreign inputs, which is bought from dollar and euro, from Russia, from Azerbaijan, from other uh, countries in the South Asia, in the United States, Arabic, United Emirates, uh, uh, and in other uh, countries, Saudi Arabia and let's say Iran, I Iraq, some other countries who are holding some oil and gas in their hands and distributing to the other nations. Uh, most of the economical and of course uh, crisis coming from this energy problem, as you are understanding currently the Russia reduced the distribution of this uh, gas and increase the prices and many of the most uh, EU countries are exercising problem because the gas and energy becomes very expensive and the production operation process is also becoming very expensive and this is then the problem to the economy because they are not able to produce and sell uh, with a reasonable prices because of this uh, gas problem. The aggregate expenditure, the amount uh, which is spent on final goods and services in the economy is represented. Um, the next part is going to be presented to you in the other slides. Uh, I'm going to quit this. If you have any problem, tell me. If not, then I will quit this and present the other part. <coughs> I, I don't have any problem so far. Okay. Yes, Check which one I'm going.
Okay, you are seeing this, I think now. The consumption real GDP and multiplier by the mark uh, as a professor of consumption and saving. You see these slides? No, yeah. I cannot see it. Cannot uh, see. I don't okay. know why I can. Okay, I, I will share it again. Now, uh, now I can see it. Now I can see it. Oh, you see? You see the slides? Consumption real yes. GDP? Okay. Yes, right. now I can see. <laughs> Okay, the extension of the former uh, uh, PowerPoint, uh, we're having again this, the major propensities and uh, the impact to the economy. The real disposable income, as I said to you, is the GDP, the real GDP minus the net taxes uh, or after tax real uh, income is uh, created. The consumption spending on new goods and services out of a household's current income, and whatever is not consumed is supposed to be going to save, which is uh, supposed. Uh, we don't know whether it is true or not. It is expected to be. The consumption includes such things as buying food and goods to a uh, concern. And the saving the act of not consuming all of one's current income. Whatever is not consumed out of spendable income is by definition saved. It must be. It is supposed. And saving is an action measured over time, a flow supposed to be. And saving are, savings are a stock and accumulation resulting from the act of saving in the past, which is expected to create some reasonable resources to loan our funds to the economy, to the investors. And consumption goods, goods bought by households to use up such a food and movies, and consumption plus saving equals disposable income. And saving equals to disposable income minus consumption, or vice versa. Investment is the spending by businesses on things such as machines and buildings, which can be used to produce goods and services in the future. The investment part of real GDP is the portion that will be used in the process of producing goods in the future and produce a durable, non-consumable goods that firm used to make other goods. In the classical model, the supply of saving was determined by the rate of interest because it is supposed to be the, as much as interest is high, then the saving will be enlarged in the Ricardian economics. The higher the rate, the more people wanted to save and the less they want to, to consume, as it is supposed to be. But currently, you know, uh, many things change. In some countries, they are giving either negative interest, but they are still saving in some developed nations, isn't it? Because they have too much money and they need to put some uh, banking, some some uh, intermediaries, some institutions for preserving their capital, and this is the cost of this saving. This is the cost of this securing this money. Uh, but in our countries, uh, we are still having and struggling with this inflation. And since the inflation is high, it is expected that the interest rate is also high for consolidating and not giving any loose for the real income or real value of the money. Unfortunately, this is not always realized because many emerging economies giving less interest rate than the inflation, and this will then cause some depreciation of the currency. This will cause some devaluation and uh, reducing its value, the currency value, and this is not good for the economy. The Keynesian view is, is an argue that interest rate is not the most important determinant, as I mentioned to you, uh, opposite side from the classical. The most important determinant is the individual's real saving and consumption decisions, which is becoming more realistic. Uh, of course, the uh, saving and the interest rate is important, but it is uh, more important to uh, the, the household's decision, whether they are going to save or consume, it is dependent to the household's uh, uh, decision. 
and real saving and consumption decisions depend primarily on the household's real disposable income. As much as you are having much income, as I said to you in the former uh, presentations, and you have some more reasonable, uh, uh, let's say, disposable income for consuming, for maintaining your welfare in comfortable life standards, and you have then some other uh, capital in your pocket, then you will then determine to save. But as I mentioned to you, the minimum wage in many emerging economies is very low, and most of the people are trying to survive, trying to catch up the next month with this uh, minimum wage, with the small capital or salary or wages or disposable income. And this is then how they are going to uh, save is a big question. Is then the big question why they are going to save since they are not able to survive with this capital, with this income. The Keynes was concerned with changes in the aggregate demand, which is the consumption, investment, governmental expenditure, and net export, and the relationship between amount of consumed and disposable income is supposed to be important. And consumption function tells us how much people plan to consume at various levels of disposable income. As you are observing here, here we are giving the consumption on the vertical y on the x-axis we have the income, so called to GDP or disposable income. And as you are observing, the zero, the the center which is increasing is the uh, income, also called the output, is parallelly distributed, but the expenditures, uh, the uh, expected consumption is somehow starting from 100, which is, is supposed to be the consumption function, it has uh, some constant because we are not expecting that the disposable income is starting from zero, it is somehow starting from some uh, uh, from prices, from constants, from intercept, and goes and uh, uh, intersect the uh, output. And you are observing here the area below this equilibrium where Y is intersect each other from the uh, output and aggregate expenditure is this savings and when you are accessing or moving above this equilibrium position, you are starting to save because you are having this uh, ability to save. But below this, this income, this disposable income, somehow showing you that you are not able to save, you are having some problem with this uh, disposable income which is given to you or the GDP which is existing in the economy is because we are talking about the nation's level activities, isn't it? Therefore, this GDP is somehow is not allowing you to make some saving. Therefore, consumption above the uh, output is always creating problem. And if it is below after the equilibrium, then it is then the uh, ability of the the economy or of the country to make some saving or the person if it is in the singular or micro level activities for the individuals illustrated. The autonomous consumption is the part of consumption that is independent of the level of disposable income and the changes in autonomous consumption shift the consumption function which is 45 degree reference line as it is explained. The line along which planned real expenditures equal real GDP per year. As I mentioned to you, the planned and the real GDP is becoming intersect each other at point E where the Y on the X axis is intersecting each other. The negative saving, a situation in which spending exceeds income, which is the normal situation in current economies and current uh, budgets and current disposable incomes, which is given. And average propensity to consumption 
is the real consumption divided by the real disposable income, as I mentioned to you in the former presentation. The proportion of the total disposable income that is consumed is given. The average propensity to save is the real saving divided by the real disposable income, and state proportion is then the disposable income of real uh, disposable income. If it is given a simplest example here, income are increases by six thousand dollar to sixty thousand, and the consumption is fifty four thousand, and the saving is six thousand. When you are dividing this, then you will see zero point ninety. The average propensity of consumption is realized, which has meant zero point ten is the average propensity to uh, saving is expected to be realized. Marginal propensity to consumption is the ratio of the change in the real consumption to the change in the real disposable income. Then the marginal propensity of consumption is the change in real consumption will be divided to the change in real disposable income. And the marginal propensity to saving, as I mentioned to you, the ratio of the change in the saving to the change in disposable income. The multiplier is becoming also important here. The ratio of the change in the equilibrium level of real national income to the change in autonomous expenditure and the number of number which uh, is a change in autonomous real investment or autonomous real consumption is multiplied to get the change in equilibrium real GDP. The multiplier, as you see here, is one over one minus multiple uh, marginal propensity to consumption will be expected or the one over marginal propensity to saving because one minus marginal propensity of consumption is equal to marginal propensity to saving or marginal propensity of saving plus marginal propensity of consumption is equal to one. Therefore, either or you can use for estimating the marginal propensity for the multiplier uh, in the economy or effects of the multiplier for the GDP. It is possible that a rel relatively small change in consumption or investment can trigger a much larger change in the real economy. As you are observing here, when we are giving a solid example, you will then understand if it is marginal propensity 0.9 and uh, the marginal excuse propensity. Excuse me. Yes, please. Uh, professor, I have you explain it super fast. Sometimes oh. I, I cannot understand it. Yeah, it's oh, very fast. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, because I have done this in the last. Uh, uh, which which one am I have to. You, you know, this marginal propensity is, is it problem? Yeah, from this part, it, it would be better that you explain it again. OK, thank you. OK, uh, now uh, I, I have given you the formula in the former uh, slides. But when you are looking here, the average propensity of consumption, you ask me questions and I will explain you better because here is given a simple example. The average propensity of consumption is expected to estimate here income increased by six thousand dollars to sixty thousand and the consumption is 40, 54,000, and the saving is expected to 6,000. And then the average propensity of consumption is equal to, when you are dividing uh, this each other, 54,000 to 60, it gives you the average propensity of consumption. And I have already informed you average propensity to consumption plus average consum uh, propensity of saving is equal to one, isn't it? Therefore, here we are expecting that the consumption, average propensity of consumption is 0 0.90. And when you are subtracting, subtracting this from one, the average propensity of saving will become 0 0.10, isn't it? You agree here, you are understanding this part, I think. Yes, yes, yes. No, I can understand. And the marginal propensity to consumption is also similarly estimated, which is given in the former slides to you, the delta C divided to delta I, which is the change in real consumption will be divided to the change in disposable income. Delta C over delta I, okay, or delta DI, let's say, disposable income. You know this formula from the last uh, presentation. And the marginal propensity to saving is also delta S over delta I, which means the change in real saving will be divided to the change in real disposable income or real income. OK, and I told you marginal propensity of saving plus marginal propensity of 
consumption is also equal to one. Or uh, any other, if you are moving to the other side of the equation, this will then gives you marginal propensity of saving is one minus marginal propensity to consumption or marginal propensity of consumption is equal to one minus marginal uh, um, propensity of saving. Is it either or is equally uh, distributed because marginal propensity of saving plus marginal propensity of uh, consumption is equal to one. And the multiplier is expected to estimate it by using these propensities and one over one minus uh, marginal propensity of consumption will give you the multiplier or one over as it is given here marginal propensity of saving will give you the multiplier either or you can use for estimating the pro uh, multiplier <clears throat> which is affecting and changing the economy very heavily and the multiplier as i said to you is the ratio of the change in the equilibrium level of the real national income to the change in autonomous expenditures and the number by which a change in autonomous real investment or autonomous real consumption is multiplied to get the change in equilibrium real GDP. And it is possible that a relatively small change in consumption or investment can trigger a much larger change in the real GDP. We are using here consumption and investment because consumption is consumed and investment is the amount of the saving which is distributed and that because saving is equal to investment, isn't it? You know this from the uh, former classes, I think. Saving is equal to investment. You know this, I think. Do you know? From the economical classes, since you are economic students? Yes, I, yes you know. Thank you. Also, you know. Uh, mm, I think. I forget about it. See, you forget it, but it is so. Uh, I think any is remembering, but uh, as I said to you, it is so. Uh, saving is equal to investment. Therefore, you can replace any other whenever you are questioning. And consumption is also the amount of the money which is consumed in the economy. And saving is the amount of the money which is directed to the banking sector for investment purposes. Therefore, saving and investment is equal to each other. And here, when we are going to estimate the impact of this investment to the economy, the real GDP, how it is affected, then you are going to use this multiplier 1 over 1 minus MPC or 1 over MPS, so called 1 minus marginal propensity of consumption or one minus marginal propensity of saving, okay? And here it is giving you the example. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, see it. Is there a Just question? Just I said, please? okay. No, I don't have a question. Okay, then marginal propensity of consumption is 0 0.9 and marginal propensity of saving is then expected to become 0 0.10, isn't it? Because marginal propensity of consumption plus marginal propensity of saving is equal to one. And since it is so, then marginal propensity for finding the marginal propensity of saving, you have to subtract this from one. One minus 0 0.9 will give you the 0 0.1. Then marginal propensity of saving then will be estimated. And then you are going to divide this one over one minus 0 0.9 or one over 0 0.1, then will give you then 10, isn't it? And if $50 million as a GDP is invested, then it will become $500 billion in the real GDP. If it is $50 billion invested to the GDP enlargement, the impact, as you are seeing, to the to whole economy, to the real GDP, real gross domestic production, will be $500. $500 billion, of course. It is very high, isn't it? Therefore, only five, uh, 50 billion dollar is increasing 10 times. This has meant the total real GDP. Therefore, amount of the saving, which is only 0.1, has very huge amount of contribution to the real GDP. Therefore, saving rate must be increased in the economy for becoming dominant position in the global platform in the international markets otherwise you are always stagnating and most of the unfortunately emerging economies <coughs> are not able to increase their saving because they are paying 
<coughs> they are giving their employees, they are giving their um, uh, people, they are giving their citizens very small capital, isn't it? Their wages are very small. I don't know what is your minimum wage in your country you are coming from, uh, Sayyid and uh, Ani. I think you are coming from, uh, Sayyid, Afghanistan. It's 100. Where are you yeah. are coming? Afghan? Yeah, Afghanistan. Where are you coming? Afghanistan. And you? Any? Congo. Congo. The minimum wage is very slow, very low, isn't it? Yes. And this is the reason because people are not able to save since they are getting these small wages. Am I right? How they are going to save? This is somehow a scenario which is created from the developed nations. They are tell, thinking that when you give uh, your employees uh, less money and small uh, wages, they will produce uh, cheaper. But this is not true because in Germany, they are getting very high salaries but they are still in the uh, first or in the last in the first uh, 10 countries in the development isn't it therefore the minimum wage should be reasonable for making and letting people to save some and when you are saving this will then increase and enlarge the economical activities but they are not doing this they are trying to increase and enlarge their economy with small uh, wages with uh, lower wages to reduce the prices of the goods and services. But on the other side, they are not able to access, get, uh, enlarge and access, accelerate their economy because their saving rate is very low and they are not uh, multiplying their multiplier effect to the real GDP, to the gross domestic production is very, very low or very uh, weak, so-called. And a uh, multiplier in the another example, if the MPC is 0.8 and MPS is 0.2, the 50 billion is inverted, as you see here, then 1.1 1. 1 minus 0.8 is going to be 1 over 0.2 is 5, then 5 times 50, then it is going to be billion. Now make a multiplier program for a friend. As you see, the major propensity of saving must be between 10 to 20. If it is above, then this will also create problem. Because as you see, the other uh, example, which is only 10% or 0.1 or 10% is uh, considered, is higher than this one because here the, the saving rate is enlarged, but the contribution is reduced. Therefore, this uh, multiplier effect must be balanced and it must be around 15% for enlarging and increasing the economy. Investment is new expenditures on buildings and ex equipments, and it is also includes changes in inventories or items produced but not sold by businesses. Investment decisions, uh, businesses have an array of investment choices with varying rates of return, so-called profit, and Keynes believed that when interest rate increased in the credit market plant, investment decreased. This is very interesting, isn't it? Keynes believed that when interest rate increased, the credit market plant investment decreased because investment rate is always creating problem to the borrowers, not the savers. Savers enjoy this higher interest rate, but on the other side, the borrowers, so-called investors, are not happy to borrow and make some entrepreneurship or make some investment. Therefore, this interest rate is also very important for balancing it at a reasonable level, not too high. It must be balanced and at, at adjusted to the inflation, to the uh, nominal uh, value of the currency, but it must be balanced, not too high, because when it is too high, then the investment becomes very uh, problematic. Conversely, when interest rate decreases, the planned investment increases, vice versa, as I said, the opposite of this. Therefore, there is a downward sloping investment curve, which means as much as you are increased the interest rate, the investment decreases, as much as reduced the interest rate, the investment increases. And for the savers, as much as you are increasing the interest, is parallelly increased, and as much as decreased, is parallelly reduced. But as I said to you, it must be on the level for balancing the 
and preventing the both parties' preferences. And uh, if not, then it's a problem. This is then the uh, investment or so called the borrowers line is represented, which is uh, negatively related with the interest rate. And as, mu as much as, much as uh, the interest rate is reduced, the investment, as you see, it's enlarged. The investment shifts, investment may also shift due to the future expectation of the future sales by business people and changes in productive technology and increasing or decreasing the taxes because future expectation or future sales expecting people to put some reservations, isn't it, for the future? Because if the future sales and future profit is expecting to boom, then people don't want to sell it. The changes in the productivity, technology, newer technology, accelerate and uh, boost the production operation process is also important for making higher profit. And increase or decrease in the taxes is also important. If you are increasing the tax rate, people are not able to enlarge their economies because the tax rate for the entrepreneurs are becoming very high and they don't enjoy to produce and enlarge their economical activities. And on the other side, if it is decreased, then it's enlarged. They are economic activities and their resources becoming enlarged. Similarly, for the household scene, but the opposite way, if you are increasing the taxes for the households, they are not happily enjoying because they have some burden on their shoulder, their disposable income becomes smaller. And if you decrease the income, because uh, so if you in decrease the taxes and the income, disposable income and large, this will then give them chance to uh, consume more and save more. Therefore, the tax rate must be also in a reasonable way because we will apply on the graphic and we will estimate this also as much as you are increasing the tax rate in some countries, this is increased very high, is not transferred the whole uh, tax which is uh, deducted from the savers, from the borrowers to the economy because there are debt weights and these debt weights are uh, going somewhere else and not to the government's budget, not to the other parties' uh, resources and large, but some people will profit from these higher taxes. Therefore, the tax regime must be around 15%, maximum 20% for the borrowers, for the entrepreneurs also, and for the disposable income, it must be also between 10 to 15, not too much because, <laughs> and for the minimum wage, there mustn't be any tax because they are not able to survive if they are having these taxes on their shoulder. The investment or what is called autonomous investment is added to the Keynesian income model and it is parallel and above the consumption function line. It is labeled as C plus I or C plus S, as I said to you. An addition of investment to consumption rises to the level of real GDP or national income at the equilibrium point of the 45 degree angle. As it is represented, the 45 angle is going from this origin and cross it and divide it to the two equal prices. And the consumption and aggregate expenditures is going to increase as much as your saving, consumption, governmental expenditures enlarge. It is shifted to the higher level and reduce, of course, the saving rate. And uh, this is then the problem. The increase in inventories, if consumers purchase fewer goods and services than anticipated, these lives, firms with unsold products and inventories will rise. Businesses respond by cutting back production to reduce unplanned business inventories, thus reducing the real GDP. Therefore, if there are a planned or unplanned decrease in business inventories, then business will increase production of goods and services and increase employment. This is the problem. As you see, one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. Therefore, this must be balanced to prevent the sustainable economical model. Ultimately, there will be an increase in the uh, real GDP. 
government spending like investment is considered autonomous autonomous not determined by levels of disposable income and g or governmental expenditures in the model includes federal state and local governmental spending and the transfer payments like social security are not included in the in the governmental expenditures and it is estimated that governmental expenditures account for 20 percent of the gdp and the keynesian model assumes a lump sum tax which means that real GDP will be reduced by the amount of the lump sum tax. This is tax decreases by C and I. The foreign sector is determined by the export, export minus import, so-called net export. The trade surplus will increase the real GDP and the trade deficit will decrease the real GDP because trade surplus is a positive asset to the economy and trade deficit, as I said, to balance of payment if the export is less than Import, this will be a deficit, this will be a negative value and reduce this the, uh, contribution to the real GDP. And the foreign sector is also autonomous. Together, C plus I plus G plus NX, which is the components of the GDP, are often given the nation notion all expenditures on the macro models. And the C plus I plus G plus NX curve you studied in chapters that we didn't, of course, I'm giving you these uh, summarized uh, uh, presentations, is directly related to the aggregate expenditure curve in the Keynesian income model, as I have represented to you in this curve. You will see here the aggregate expenditure curve is the lines, the green line and the purple line, which is intersecting the uh, 45 degree, which is the output or the expected output. And the real GDP, as you are observing, the realized GDP regarding to the consumption, aggregate expenditures or governmental expenditures, uh, investment, all included and enlarge and increase the level to the higher uh, phases and reduce the saving in the economy. The Keynesian model assumes a lump sum. Okay, we don't need this. Uh, we were here. The major difference is that the Keynesian income model does not include price level changes of the first macro model. We will exercise, of course, this in the uh, following chapter. And the Keynesian assumptions business pay no indirect taxes or the sales tax. And business distributes all profits to the shareholders and there is no depreciation in the economy supposed to be and the economy is closed and no foreign trade is supposed to be realized. OK, this was the assumptions. Next lecture, we will go to the applications, then you will understand better the Keynesian model with some uh, uh, applications because I don't want to go through the this is uh, how many, 73 pages. This will be too much for you for today. I will give you next lecture this with applications, uh, uh, estimations. You will understand better this, but not today. Uh, today I, I stop here. You read this. Uh, I will upload some PDF also to the system. Then you will also read this for your exam. And next week we don't have class. We will have the midterm exam week and you don't have to come to the online classes. You will come to the uh, school, to the university for having our exam. And after the next week, we have the uh, uh, presentation of this uh, Keynesian model with calculations. Do you have any question? Yeah, I have a question uh, for exam. Just we need to uh... Uh, memorize and uh, study chapter one and chapter two or this uh, Keynesian model assumption should we read? Uh, I mean, I have, chapter two is included. I have uploaded uh, some uh, PowerPoints. I uploaded the videos here. There is also in the YouTube channel this uh, this uh, videos. If you watch this, Akal player, Ergin Fikri, Akal player, YouTube. Then you can watch the videos, you can review these videos once again for memorizing and understand. You can stop and watch again and again for understanding these presentations. And there is also some cues uploaded, PowerPoints and some uh, PDFs, which will help you to understand this uh, for your exam, okay? Because only PowerPoint is not enough. I, I don't have a problem with chapter one and chapter two, just Keynesian 
model. Keynesian is very huge. Yes, Keynesian, mm -hmm. we already started. You will learn it. I mean, the propensities, these things, uh, you will study with the more comprehensive applications, then you will understand better. But I will upload some uh, materials for reading and understanding better. OK, don't worry. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to ask too much from the Keynesian. I will ask you some uh, uh, simple estimations like propensities for the uh, for the midterm. But after the midterm, you will then go deeper and understand better this uh, Keynesian expenditure model. OK. And okay. please let me <laughs> let me know what happened with this Rahel and Anis because they are always on and they are not attending to the class. Are they in my group? Because they are in my group, but they are never attending to the class. And this is a problem for them, isn't it? Try to communicate with them. I don't know where you are. Yeah, it's, it's a problem for them, but we are not responsible. Actually, I don't know them. Otherwise, I could send them messages or I, okay. I could well. If they have a problem, then they will not be able to pass this course because since they are not attending any classes and they don't have any knowledge about the course, how they are going to participate to the exam and the course. Anyway, thank you for joining this class. Next week on Thursday, as I said to you, at 2.30, we have the exam. Come to the campus and we will do the exam, okay? The classical exam. Do you have any question or anything to ask me? Any and see it? I don't have any question. Okay. You don't have either any? I want to, to know if the exam will be just theory. Theory, I yes. I want to know is. if the exam will be. Yes, there will be theoretical exam and some calculations will be, some small calculations will be also in. The look at the cues and look at the things. Oh, I don't hear you because you interrupt. You your voice is coming uh, uh, not properly. I want to know if it will be of Keynesian model. Keynesian model, not too much. Little bit, maybe propensities. I will ask you estimation propensities or average propensities. But not too much, okay? I will give you the components maybe to estimate a little bit, but not too much, not big, not big issue. You will exercise only the model, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. See you then next week in the university. Okay, bye-bye. Um, professor, yes. just uh, I need to mention something uh, yes, because please. on Monday we have uh, another exam and next yeah. week, coming yeah. week, we have uh, an exam with Ms. Professor Erdal, managerial economics. As for it's very uh, tough subject, uh, as you know, on Monday we have a uh, exam. Totally, we need uh, time to get pr uh, prepare ourselves about your subject. How many days we have uh, off to get prepared for this subject? I don't know, you have to study regularly, then you will re make revision during the week. I don't know, you have to read uh, properly. You have to watch the videos and uh, read the uploaded materials, then you will understand better, I think. Managerial economics, yeah, is micro, I... micro economics. So if you know some micro, then you will pass this. The utilities, the this is good, good. The elasticities, I don't know if you are in economics, then you must do this. It is. Also good subject. I am also giving uh, manager. So totally, I think if it's on uh, Friday, it will cost. be better for me because on Monday we have we have uh, another exam with but professor. As I said to you, this 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 I don't uh, I don't uh, decide. I only uh, determine the hour, and they offer me the class which is available on Thursday. And then I said, OK, Thursday is because there is another group of students from PhD and they also accepted this uh, on Thursday. Therefore, one day mustn't be a big issue for you. 
you can uh, manage it. You can study uh, and come to the exam. As I said to you, it will be a uh, midterm exam will be not too difficult. I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to offer you some uh, theoretical and some easy calculations, not too big issue, but you have to study. You understand if you don't study, you will not do. You have to study stuff and you watch the videos in the YouTube. You can subscribe to YouTube and watch these videos repeat and understand this stuff and go to the queues and watch the download the materials and read it again and you will understand and uh, there will be no problem i think okay because last week i asked you and you said also okay for the thursday and i managed with the other group also now, if I'm going to change it, then this will be then problem because there will be around 10 students from the PhD. So I can change the program, which is uh, already issued and published, announced. Excuse me, Professor. Last week, we uh, decided uh, this exam will be on Friday, two weeks later of Friday, not on Thursday. I, I, I know, I know, but I told you that it will be next week, either Thursday or Friday. I didn't fix it, but I discussed with the other group and they preferred all, which is more than 10, as I said to you, Thursday. Since it is certain, I suppose it will be okay. I don't know. I think he quit. For you is a problem, any? No, okay. I don't have any problem. It is okay for me. Okay, thank you. Because on Friday, I have another exam. Okay. Okay. You have another exam. So you see, so it mustn't be a big problem. Yeah. Okay, then say it. Uh, as I said to you, it, it will not be a big uh, problem one day. Try to study and you will satisfy it, believe me, okay? Okay, uh, okay, no problem, Professor, okay. Okay, 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 then, okay. okay then see you then next uh, week on uh, Thursday in the university, okay? Okay, okay. thanks. Goodbye, bye-bye, bye-bye.